Hey, this is Russ. Hey, you know, this channel has grown quite a bit from people who have had knee issues watching my knee videos. And I do appreciate the comments that I'm getting from you and uh, being able to correspond with you. And a lot of you have encouraged me to continue doing these knee replacement videos. I will have to say that I kept wondering, what am I going to do once my knee is good? <laughs> when it's done with, how am I going to make more videos? Then it dawned on me. I got another knee to do. <laughs> I got a right knee to go through. So you guys aren't getting rid of me anytime soon for that. Uh, when am I going to do the right knee? I don't know. Uh, not with this uh, whole scare in the world right now. I'm going to hold off as long as I can. But in the meantime, uh, you can see all the old videos. If you just search the playlist, look for knee replacement videos, you'll find them all there. But the one thing I didn't do for you guys is show you the actual knee. Now you've seen photos in the past of the, the knee um, and the scar and everything, but you haven't seen the knee when the uh, staples and everything was in there. So today I'm gonna show you all of those photos. So if you are squeamish, let me forewarn you right now, you're gonna see some stuff that you might not wanna look at. And uh, I, I'm gonna encourage you not to turn off the video because um, you could still listen, and I'm describing things, but <laughs> these these photos that I'm going to show you are quite a few of them. These are a collection of photos that I've done up to this point from when I started all the way until, uh, until now. So it's been almost eight months now. So I'm going to kind of flip through these as quick as I can, about 10 seconds per video, and just kind of explain real quickly what you're seeing. So it's, it's not, uh, not the most refined video, but... We've got so many to go through, I'm going to explain as best as I can. So, here we go. Hang on and enjoy the ride. Let's start out with my torn meniscus. This is my left knee's torn meniscus, which was done 15 years ago. And you can see on the bottom two photos, the tear. And the doctor then goes in and, and scopes it out. So if you look at the bottom left photo, you can see how the meniscus compared to the, the bones on the top and bottom. It's cleaned up at this point. I've tried other things too. I tried this system called the Bionic here, which is an electrical impulse to kind of keep pain down, but it, uh, I had a, a reaction to the electrodes, uh, some type of latex thing or something. Um, I bought a scooter so I can get around town with my students uh, when we did uh, field trips. I do uh, photography classes. But um, here is my knee. If you look at the left knee, which is actually on your right hand side, it's actually closer on one side than the other. So you're getting a bone against bone situation. I'm not quite 100% there, but um, close enough that I can feel it. And uh, of course, now you can see my kneecap. And if you look in the top part of my kneecap, it actually has a little bone spur up there too. So the kneecap is still in there with me. Uh, here I am actually uh, getting ready for <laughs> uh, recovery after the operation was done of my left knee. And uh, this device here is not for blowing air out, it's for sucking air in so that you can <laughs> keep your lung capacity. And I had to do this uh, quite a few times uh, a day. In fact, every few, I don't know how long it was, every 10 minutes, I don't know what it was, I can't remember. Here's uh, the brace that I wore right after the surgery itself. And this is the kind of food that they gave me at the, um, at the hospital. You can order what you want, and I didn't know what to get, so uh, <laughs> you can see the basic uh, dinner I ended up with and uh, here I am getting ready to uh, probably do a little bit of exercising on the CPM machine uh, right after the uh, surgery was done so uh, this was my in-home physical therapist this is the uh, the amount of bend or flexion I was able to get right out of the bat and that's about all I actually was able to do this of course is a little more gruesome and <laughs> this is the actual scar <laughs> Uh, I had staples, of course, and so you can, you can definitely see that. And we do keep temperatures, uh, just like we do now because of COVID-19. Um, you got to make sure your temperature doesn't rise. And mine's had actually spiked up to about 102, 103 degrees, so I had some issues too in the beginning. This is the CPM machine, which kind of bends my knee automatically for me when I'm just laying down. And I'm going to show you a quick video here of how that actually works. So you can see, um, as I'm laying there, uh, I had this on the sofa and it's just rising. So you can set the amount of bend you want. Uh, a lot of uh, physical therapists don't really like the CPM machine because it's, it is a passive thing. You're not putting your own weight on your knee or anything like that. But 
I found that it was still helpful, uh, especially in the beginning stages, just to kind of keep my leg moving. So even when I wasn't um, working out, so to speak, on my own, uh, laying back and just letting this do this for me um, was, I, I think, still helpful. Just keeping that movement going in the beginning stages is important. But I actually had the CPM machine for three months. <laughs> and luckily for me, my insurance company paid for all of that. Here's a quick photo here you can see of just uh, the knee with new dressing on there. And this, this was gonna be there for a while. Uh, but eventually, um, they're going to take the staples out. Here's, here's what the knee looks like um, uh, with the staples still in there. And, and again, this is a little bit of time now, so it doesn't look quite as bad as that first time that you saw it. Here's a little different angle of that. And the doctor will mark up your knee too, so that they know when they close you up, uh, they, the skin lines up where it's supposed to line up. So um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a painful, painful operation, no doubt. Wanted to also show you too what the knee looks like with the um, the new knee in there. So you can see um, the, those white things, of course, is metal. <laughs> you can actually kind of see where the, uh, the staples are too. So the kneecap stays where it is, but there's a disc in front of it. You can't really see it too well on an x-ray, but there's a disc just like uh, a disc that is kind of your new meniscus. This is an interesting one. It kind of shows you my knee is bent, so you can see the, uh, the staples curving downwards as it's bent. And here's where um, the, the dressing is starting to fall off. They had already taken off my staples. You can see on the top, um, the, the staples are removed over there. And I couldn't straighten my leg out. So while waiting for physical therapy, I would just kind of prop my leg up. And that is the, that was the straightest I can get my leg, believe it or not. And you can see the bend in there. Here's the knee fully without the staples in there. So yeah, it doesn't look good. Everyone who, who saw me while I was at physical therapy, I usually wore shorts. They all stare at you. <laughs> there's, there's nothing else they can do. Here again, I'm at the physical therapy place just waiting for my session to happen. But uh, yeah, everyone stares at you because they, they can't believe what they're looking at. And um, I, I kind of left it bare because you, it's easier to work with the, uh, with the shorts on rather than having um, uh, sweatpants. Sweatpants, you know, any, any of the clothing moving against that that scar, you would feel it. So I felt it easier to be with uh, shorts. This is my first knee manipulation. So you can see the doctor has actually been able to push me to 130 degrees while he's knocked out and with a, a uh, nerve block in there. And he was able to get zero degrees extension. So it's not like the knee can't do it, but it is the scar tissue that prevents it. Right now, I'm lucky I can still do maybe 10 degrees right now. Here I am at the first physical uh, therapy place that I went to, uh, just hanging out, waiting for my turn. But I do get to exercise a little bit on this, uh, this machine. And um, I, I did quite a bit of that before my session. They, they were kind enough to let me work on my own for a bit until I was ready. And here I am ready for my second knee manipulation a month later. So the first one was a month, and then this one was two months later. And um, this, believe it or not, is steak. <laughs> <laughs> it, it would believe me, it didn't taste that great and it was kind of tough all right so uh, yeah that's steak with gravy believe it or not this is the jazz unit that I got uh, the doctor was able to get for me through uh, the insurance and this helps me bend my knee so uh, you set the tension of how much you want and they typically want you to have it there for about a half hour three times per day and it also does extension for you too this is the second knee manipulation, and you can see the doctor was, again was able to get 130 degrees under anesthesia, and again with an extension of zero degrees. So it's not like it can't be done, but it, it is capable of being done. I did finally hit 130 degrees, but I still cannot get zero degrees of extension. Um, and again, just waiting and sitting in bed, laying in bed and sitting in bed. Um, they kept me there one extra day so that they could do additional physical therapy for me. And uh, unfortunately, through, I don't know, it was the mistake of the hospital, they, they didn't have things ready for me. So I wasn't able to get as much physical therapy as I would hoped to have done having stayed there one extra day, which of course cost me money as well, besides the, uh, the insurance company having to pay for some of that. This is the hospital bed I was in, so yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they, they hook you up to everything. You have an IV in you and everything, so that'll keep you uh, hydrated and everything like that. Um, 
do you, we do ice it down quite a bit because your knee is my knee still is kind of hot it still has warmth to it it's been eight months now so um, this was my breakfast there and you can order whatever you want and I, and I uh, decided to you know get a basic breakfast but for dinner I decided to uh, splurge a little bit and get some better stuff <laughs> so I don't know if you consider hamburger and fries and stuff better stuff but this was better than that other uh, that other meal that I had uh, here I am again with the jazz unit uh, doing an extension trying to straighten that leg out now you can see in this next photo here that's coming up I am still at 15 degrees here you see that is not straight now you saw that the doctor was able to straighten it out but that's under anesthesia so yeah I still have an issue I can do about 10 degrees now and here you can see um, the, the jazz unit on the knee or on the leg to, to help the knee so uh, this next photo here is uh, with flexion, so you can see how the the knee is bending, and I can I can push it as hard as I want and go back as far as you can, but that was the most I was able to do at the time. I usually go on stairs and I will just kind of put one leg up on a step and then kind of lean forward back and forth, and that helps stretch my knee out as well. These next series of photos are just photos of the knee, and I wanted to show you what the scar had looked like, and I taken. Uh, these photos at different time periods so you can see here at February 3rd this would be 19 and a half weeks out uh, it doesn't look too bad um, but uh, the knee is still swollen so you can hear, see here March 28th um, it, it actually looks worse than the other one but that's only because it's a higher resolution photo that I took with this one so as a, a direct comparison of my left and right knees you can see how much swollen the the left knee is compared to the right which has not had any operation yet <laughs> that's gonna come in time this one here is showing the December 18th versus the March 28th knee and you can see that um, it, it really didn't look that much different but uh, in April 24 I took another photo and I felt that my knee uh, swelling was a little bit lower now so as you take a look through this photo now, you'll see a comparison of the March versus the 24th of April. And I tried to line up the scar so it's the same size. You can see that the March leg is, is more swollen. So it's coming down. Over here, you can see I so superimposed the photos so that you can see uh, what the March versus April knee looked like. And I just lined up the scars so we know that it is the same positioning. And again, you can see it as a different type of uh, photo here. Now to work on my extension uh, through uh, one of my uh, YouTube uh, viewers, he says, you know, you should hang a weight off of your, your leg. And so I added um, 10 pounds, two five pound dumbbells are inside each of those bags. And then that gives me some weight. So this is what I'm currently doing today. And I'm still at around 10 degrees, but I'm still working at things. So hopefully things will get a little bit better. Well. I hope you uh, learned something just looking at the photos and, the, and hearing the descriptions. Um, yeah, I'm sorry if some of the photos were a little gross, but that is uh, the reality of knee replacement. I'll be doing another series of knee replacement videos when the right knee happens, so uh, we're not done with this. But I'll continue on with uh, more knee replacement uh, uh, updates uh, as I'm still rehabbing my own left knee. Uh, it's been eight months now and I'm still having issues with everything from um, extension. It's not going past 10 degrees, it's still sitting there. I've gotta get that down to at least five. Zero degrees would be even better. Um, I can't bend my leg automatically. If I was laying in bed and you said, okay, now do a heel slide and slide your leg back, I can't do that. <laughs> I don't have the strength to do it. Um, I can probably hit still 105 degrees on my own. If I'm sitting here and bending my leg back, I can do it. But laying down for a while, you know, if my leg was extended for a while and you said pull back now and do it, yeah, I can't even do that. So walking is not very easy for me. I still have a lot of issues. So we got more videos coming. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell icon and spread the word. Uh, we'll grow this channel yet. <laughs> Talk to you guys next time.